Hey everyone, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to week two of Low Spend June. Um, I went to the store twice. The first time I went, I got a watermelon. I had got grapes. I had a 99 cent coupon, a gila apple, a cucumber. I had a coupon for free carrots. I got another sack of corn, some potatoes, and the total that I spent was $16.34. For my second grocery haul this week, I got some bananas, raspberries and blackberries, asparagus, some cherry tomatoes, I needed some rosemary, an iceberg lettuce, avocados, and then I got some Italian bread, hot dog buns, and hamburger buns. And they had uh, the London broil steaks on sale for $1.99 a pound. I thought that was a great value. And you had a limit of two packages, so I did pick up the two packages. I'm gonna get these ready for the freezer. And it was almost nine and a half pounds of steak that's gonna go in the freezer. And then I picked up some Ballpark Franks. These are the beef ones. They were on sale for two for $6. Uh, Kenny and I are going to California next week, so I thought that might be a good one to have on hand uh, for the boys. Uh, I got another roll of free paper towels because I had a coupon for that. I picked up some frozen french fries for the kids because they can do cheeseburgers and fries one night. And then I picked up the Cracker Barrel or cheese. I had a coupon for this. It was 99 cents. Okay, let's look at the receipts so I can show you how much I spent. The total was $60.36 after coupons. And then I also took some recycling in. I found an extra bag in the garage and I took it in, $9.85. And that left a balance of $50.51. And I thought that was a little high. When I got out to the car, I looked at the receipt and I saw that they actually charged me $4.99 for each of the hot dogs and it should have been two for six. So I went back in the store with my receipt and the hot dogs and they refunded me $3.98. So the actual amount that I paid was uh, $46.53. $4 basically paid for a whole steak. So I was glad I went back in the store and they were very accommodating. So that's my grocery haul for this week. I have some salad dressing I made a while ago. I wanted to use it up and I haven't. So I'm gonna use it for a marinade. I'm gonna marinade one of these London broils. Could you open up that bag? I'm gonna do the biggest one. I'm just gonna take this marinade because it has really all the things that are in a marinade. Shallots and garlic and all that. It has acid, you know, like a citrus, a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of brandy and put a little glug, glug, glug in there too. And I think that's gonna make a delicious marinade. I'm gonna get this sealed. So I'm just gonna get this in the freezer and I was able to use up that salad dressing and turn it into a marinade. The rest of this London broil, I'm gonna get uh, trimmed and cut into chunks and divide it into two food saver bags. And I'm gonna use it to make shepherd's pie because it's a tough cut of meat. So I can cook it low and slow and get the meat really tendered and then tender and then use it to make a shepherd's pie. So that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of this. I went ahead and I cubed up the three remaining smaller London broils and I divided it into two packages. I have them vacuum packed, they're going in the freezer. I'll use these to make shepherd's pie. Getting into the meal plan, I had some chicken quarters that I needed to use up in my freezer. We're gonna barbecue them. For dinner, we're having barbecue chicken. I'm gonna take the skin and the barbecue sauce off mine to make it a little, well, a lot <laughs> more Weight Watcher friendly. The corn and the watermelon is zero smart points, toss green salad, the ranch dressing, one tablespoon is one smart point. 
So this is a wonderful dinner that the kids and Ken are going to enjoy and I can stick on my little Weight Watcher plan. It looks delicious. Tuesday we're having San Diego style rolled tacos and a good rule of thumb is to count seven smart points per taco. That's just like a general, if you don't know, uh, haven't calculated it out, you know, and made them yourself, a good rule of thumb is seven smart points per taco. Then you'd have to add any smart points for guacamole. I'm also making a creamy jalapeno dressing that I can kind of just drizzle it on. It's packed with flavor, so you're not gonna need a lot of it. And watermelon, which is zero smart points. I can't wait for dinner tonight, actually. To make the creamy jalapeno dip, you'll need a cup of mayonnaise. I have that in my blender. You'll need one third cup of sour cream, one third cup of buttermilk, a four ounce can of diced green chilies, A jalapeno with seeds, two cloves of garlic, a handful of cilantro, and one packet of ranch dressing mix. Put everything in your blender and get it blitzed. I went ahead and stored it away in a mason jar. It makes about two cups. We're gonna get this put in the fridge so it can thicken up. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys. Uh, Costco has the roast beef in a can. It's 12 ounces. And this is the Kirkland brand. They also have a Hartford brand that you can buy at the grocery store. And I'm gonna use this to make the rolled tacos. I'm gonna cook this over a medium heat and once it heats up and some of the water starts evaporating, I'm gonna kind of use a fork to break it down and shred this meat. Each 12 ounce can will make a dozen shredded beef tacos or the rolled tacos, taquitos, whatever you wanna call them. And this is what it's gonna look like. Most of the water is evaporated. I've used the fork just to kind of shred the beef this is fully cooked in the can. I'm gonna turn off the heat and let this cool down so it'll be easier to handle. So to plate these up, I'm just gonna start with a bed of lettuce and take some of that dressing that I made and just drizzle a little bit of it on the lettuce. And add some cheese. little bit of tomato cilantro a couple of these rolled tacos I'll put an extra one on here for can just put a little dollop of chunky guacamole right on top. I have a cook with me video that I'll link in the description box if you want to see how to make these the, for the whole process. For dinner tonight we're having San Diego style rolled tacos. I made some creamy jalapeno dressing and we're gonna have watermelon for dessert looks so yummy. Wednesday I'm fixing leg of lamb. I'm digging through my freezer and I found a leg of lamb that I had bought at Easter time. Actually I had gotten two of them and I paid $2.99 a pound for it which was a great price. So for about two dollars a serving we're gonna have leg of lamb. I'm gonna cook it up tonight and I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. The first thing I did is I kind of took my knife and I tried to get off a lot of the extra 
fat cap that was on there, but I left a little bit of it. The next thing I'm gonna do is kinda put little slits into the meat. Take a clove of garlic that I've cut in half, place it in there, and then take a sprig of rosemary and stuff it in there. Try to get the rosemary inside so it doesn't burn when you're roasting it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting slits in the meat, inserting another piece of garlic, a little piece of rosemary, and get this leg of lamb studded with both. Now that the leg of lamb has been studded with the rosemary and garlic, I'm gonna just put a small amount of olive oil on top, salt and pepper. This is a big piece of meat, so be very generous. I also like to take the zest of a lemon and just put it on top. Then I like to put a little bit of this lemon juice on it too. We're gonna put this into a 450 degree oven for 30 minutes and then turn down the heat to 350. It's been 30 minutes and that's what your leg of lamb will look like. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven temperature down to 350. So then after about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, I start checking the temperature. We like our lamb at 150 degrees. And then what I do is I go ahead and I uh, tint it with aluminum foil. And I'll also put the lamb cooking chart in the description box for rare, medium, well done, etc. So I'm gonna get this tinted with some foil and let it rest for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna make some baked uh, Parmesan potato cubes. <laughs> I have uh, some potatoes that I scrubbed the outside really good, clean them, cut them into chunks. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil going to season with a garlic salt pepper and probably like a half a cup of parmesan cheese Give it a big mix, get everything coated, and get this onto a sheet tray. This is gonna cook right in the oven alongside of that lamb. That looks pretty good. Spread it out, get these into the oven. I have some asparagus here. Going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil, garlic salt, and some black pepper. A little bit of Parmesan. Give it a big mix. And we'll get these in the oven the last probably 20 minutes of our baking time.
for dinner tonight, we're having that leg of lamb with some mint jelly, the Parmesan roasted potatoes, and asparagus. This looks so yummy. I have some haddock in the freezer. I bought it at Aldi's a while back. I wanna use that up. And I had made some dill compound butter. I have that in the freezer. So I'm gonna make some haddock and I have the last of the mangoes. They're just turning ripe. So I'm gonna make a quick mango salsa with that to serve with the haddock. And I found a recipe for cauliflower gratin, 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 gratin. <laughs> I can't read today. <laughs> um, it called for heavy cream, but what I'm going to do to lighten it up a little bit is to use a can of evaporated milk. I think that would be a great substitution and it'll really cut back on the calories. In my pan, I have one tablespoon of butter, about a half of an onion chopped fine, salt and pepper, and probably a teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. I'm just sauteing this. I just added a large clove of garlic that I microplaned. We'll let that go for about 30 seconds. I added one and a half tablespoons of flour. I'm going to let this cook for about a minute. I added 12 ounces of evaporated milk. I'm going to bring this to temperature and it will thicken. I'm going to add a pinch of nutmeg, not too much. I'm going to add a pinch of red pepper flakes. The sauce has come to temperature and it's thickened. It smells amazing. I'm gonna turn the heat off and add about a half a cup of Parmesan grated cheese. This is gonna be the sauce to cover the cauliflower. I have 11 by seven pan that I sprayed with cooking spray and have one pound of cauliflower that has been steamed and cut into small pieces. I'm going to add our sauce to the cauliflower. In my skillet, I melted a tablespoon of butter and I'm just gonna add probably a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Give it a big stir. Then we're just gonna top our casserole with the breadcrumbs. I have the oven heating to 400. We're gonna get this into the 400 degree oven and just let the breadcrumbs uh, get nice and golden brown. That's what the casserole will look like when you bring it out of the oven. So here's what it looks like. For dinner we're having a tossed salad with ranch dressing. I had some flounder in the freezer and that's what I cooked up tonight with some chive butter. A little bit of that mango salsa. We're trying to use that up tonight. And then this is that cauliflower casserole. Yum, yum. I'm going to taste it so bad. Oh my god. It's hot. And very, very good. Mmm. That's a keeper. Mm -mm -mm. That's going in my recipe binder. So delicious. The only thing I change with the recipe is I decrease the panko breadcrumbs to half a cup. Other than that, it was Wonderful. Friday, I'm going to make some Weight Watcher chili, which is zero smart points, serving it with some uh, finely minced shallots and cherry tomatoes on top, like as a garnish. And if I have some cilantro, I'll stick that on there too. Um, I have a recipe for roasted corn jalapeno muffins. You roast the corn on the grill and then cut it off the cob. 
I have two year, ears of corn left and that's what the recipe calls for so that was perfect and honey butter that I have in the freezer already and I'm just gonna serve it with the rest of the grapes and that's gonna be dinner for dinner tonight I made the Weight Watchers turkey chili which is zero spark points we topped it with cilantro a little bit of red onion tomato and I had a little bit of red bell pepper and about a teaspoon of sour cream we're having grapes and this is a jalapeno corn cheddar muffin and I'll put the recipe to that in the description box and the link to the chili in the description box we're serving it with honey butter it's gonna be yummy and pretty guilt-free we had so much chili left over that I'm gonna serve chili cheese dogs with all the trimmings tonight with watermelon. Tonight we're having some chili cheese dogs with all the fixins, watermelon, and I'm gonna make some acai bowls later when we watch some TV. This looks so yummy. I haven't had a cheese dog in forever. And then Sunday, grilled cheese sandwiches. and tomato soup. Fresh fruit, whatever we have left. Cause Ken and I are gonna be leaving Saturday to go to California so the boys can uh, make grilled cheese, tomato soup. That'll be easy dinner for them. So that is our meal plan. So I just wanted to kind of see where I'm at for the month. The first week I spent $44.71. The second week, the two grocery uh, trip hauls totaled $62.87. So I am at $107 and some change, and I've been able to put 22 pounds of chicken breasts into the freezer in the form of five marinated chicken packets for five dinners, and nine and a half pounds of London broil steak, one is a marinated steak and the other uh, has been divided into two packages in the form of beef cubes. So that's eight uh, protein packets I have in the freezer. So I'm pretty excited. I'm really jazzed with how I've done this month. So we're halfway there. And if you guys are wanting to join us with this low spend June, please do. You guys have a great week and happy meal planning.